Hi, I'm Zeta Kai for the Gunpla Network, and this is our review of the high-grade Universal Century Delta Plus from the series Gundam Unicorn. This review is brought to you by Canadian Gundam. Be sure to use the coupon code Gunpla Network at checkout to save 10% on your entire order of Gunpla kits, accessories, tools, and paints. This particular kit is in stock right now, so if you like what you see, be sure to check them out. CanadianGundam.com so the Delta Plus was piloted by everyone's favorite. I think I like this guy. Oh, I do not like this guy. Oh, I think this guy kind of redeemed himself. Pilot Riddy Marcianos and it's kind of his personal mobile suit. There may have been a few more made. Who knows? And he gets it because, uh, well, because of nepotism. It's based on the Delta Gundam, which is based on one of my all-time favorite designs, the Hiyaku Shiki. The model kit was released in 2010, sells for a suggested price of 2200 yen or 2420 if you add the Japanese sales tax. And the kit faithfully reproduces what you see in the anime. Some lovely purpley gray parts, some dark blue, some gray, and some white accent bits here and there. It's a very good, well-constructed model kit. It's solidly engineered. Uh, its articulation isn't great, as we'll see, but it's a good kit. Uh, the white parts, you can see some there in the piping on the backs of the knees. I, I panel lined that. I guess it's a good time for me to mention I did build this kit in 2010, so that's why there's no unboxing, and that's why you'll see some uh, rather poor construction techniques here and there. So this kit comes with a bunch of stickers, but they're not that bad. All these little white pieces here on the insides of these vents here on the leg and ones on the back skirt are these little white stickers that you fold on the flat surfaces. They're a little fiddly to put on, but they've held up well for about 10 years, so I don't have any complaints. You get eye stickers, camera stickers, and some other stickers. Uh, the eye stickers, you are behind like this clear visor, which really makes them shine, as you'll see in the video. And you can choose to do red, blue, or just chrome silver. You also get these gray ones on the sides of the shoulders, which are great to hide this horrible seam line that goes across the shoulder. Speaking of seam lines, let's talk about it. There are some here on the knee, and there's a horrible hole there in the knee. One's on the head. The worst ones are right here on the shoulder, this seam line, and this really bad nub mark that I did a terrible job at removing. That same piece on the back of the leg has a seam line on the side of the shield and across the top of the wing binders as well. So there are a few, but they're not too bad. Let's talk articulation. Uh, this kit is pretty articulate, but by today's standards is okay. The head does the typical double ball joint movement, shoulders tilt back and forth, and will lift up about this far. You have to get that shoulder armor kind of out of the way. It does it a little bit. That's about as high as you can get. You, of course, get a bicep swivel, and you get an elbow bend that is unfortunately only one, one joint, and it's 90 degrees. Your typical wrist ball joint. The waist doesn't have a lot because of, I guess, the transformation, even though it's not involved at all in the transformation. So you only get one ball joint there. The side skirts will hinge in and out. Front skirts don't move, back skirts don't move. The legs are on old school ball joint system, so you don't get a big range of mo movement in the hips and you get no hip swivel. They will kick forward quite a bit, however, until they hit that front skirt. And then they get a double joint in the knee. Just a little bit at the top and a whole lot in that bottom part of the joint and they do this weird thing for the transformation later. The ankles are great because of the design of the Hyakushiki Delta Delta Plus line. Uh, there's not really any armor to inhibit the movement so they move all over the place and the toes bend down really far. The wing binders don't do much at all. They only hinge back and forth here. They're on pegs at the top that is for the transformation. So let's look at some of the accessories. Here's the shield. You get a sticker on the top, it's white and gray. It's probably the worst sticker. It's definitely the worst sticker on the kit. It's actually horrible. But the rest of it is molded in different colors and it looks really great. You get the, uh, the little white bits poking out there, the little cannon part, the gray piece, and you get a little tab that goes in the back of either arm. The beam rifle is basically the same one from the Rizel. The hand has a little tab and the rifle has a little slot so it holds the rifle beautifully you get a trigger finger hand for that and you get one beam saber hilt there is no storage for that hilt anywhere on the model kit and you get two blue beam effect blades the hands hold the hilt very well a lot better than a lot of the other gundam unicorn kits at this time so that's a nice thing to see you also get some parts for the transformation this weird like block piece um fake ankle 
bits or heel bits, I'm sorry, they're heel bits, fake shoulder pieces, and a bunch of little extra attachments that aren't used anywhere on the kit. So the accessories all work nicely and they look great. The shield, I really love the shield. Uh, a lot of these transformable mobile suits, especially later ones after this, like the Delta Kai, I'm, I'm really thinking of the Delta Kai, the shields get out of control because they're basically just designed to make the Wave Rider look better. This Wave Rider mode looks spectacular and the shield is very understated and small. I love its look. And the kit looks amazing with this super long beam rifle, just the angles and then that long beam rifle poking out. I think it looks amazing. It looks really dynamic and it adds to the very handsome look of the Delta Plus. So let's transform it into Wave Rider mode. Or rather parts form it because we're tearing this whole kit apart. Pop the arms off, pop the shoulder binders off for the wing binders, side skirt armor goes, legs come apart here at the thigh, the back skirt comes off and it comes along with the side skirt mounts. You're gonna pop those off of the back skirt. You're gonna take the shield, you're gonna rip it apart into three separate pieces and you're gonna take the one piece of the shield and attach it to the bottom of the block that you built separately. And then you're gonna start attaching other things to the block like the front of the shield goes on there. The back skirt armor goes here. And then up next are the wing binders. These look amazing once you get them on in wave rider mode. The shoulder armor pops off and you flip this little joint up and then it slides in to there. It has like a little slot and a little groove cut into that part. Then you get your fake shoulder armor pieces, stick them to your block. You're starting to really make that wave rider come alive now. Okay, the leg is crazy. You rip the ankle off, you take that piece of armor off, you rip the foot apart, plug in your fake heel part, fold it down, put that piece of armor back over top, slide this on the bottom of the leg, take the knee, flip it backwards, take the knee cover off, put the knee armor back on in a different spot, then take that whole weird looking leg piece and slide it into the wave rider. It's crazy. Take your side skirt pieces, put them back on here, take your beam rifle, flip it up, find one of the ports on the bottom, slide it on, take this, toss it aside because you don't need that anymore, move your action base, pop it in the back, and there you have it, a truly lovely Wave Rider mode. Man, I love this Wave Rider mode. It looks so incredibly great. The wingspan is impressive. The colors are great. It's, it's so like long and slender and just so beautiful. It's so perfect. The only, the only gripes you might have are the hands are still visible and you can always just pop those off if you don't like that. But the rest of it is perfect. It looks great as far as wave rider modes or flight modes go i think it's one of the most beautiful ones out there especially when you consider a lot of other flight modes especially from other like universes for instance the recently reviewed age 2 normal and it's g scepter mode there's never going to be uh, an, a temptation to display it in the wave rider mode but this kit is different uh, you really have to think about, do I want this in mobile suit mode or do I want it in its wave rider mode? Cause the wave rider mode is so great. It's also very solid and stable. You can see I put the robot Domish Zeta gun on top of it. Here it is next to one of our recent favorite flight modes, the age two Magnum. Uh, this is basically like the closest one within my grasp that was still in its flight mode. It's my son's, but they look great together. The Delta plus is amazing in flight mode. But let's put it back in mobile suit mode and compare it to some other model kits. So here we have the high grade universal century Jesta and the Banshee destroy mode. Uh, the Delta Plus is a rather tall mobile suit. It's not quite as tall as the unicorns in their destroy mode. They tower over most anything else, but it is very tall. It's also very sleek. It's svelte. It, it looks very nice. Here it is next to the real grade RX 78-2. And for a hero suit, it definitely looks menacing. I, I, I guess <laughs> I guess I'm saying hero suit in quotation marks because man, there are times I do not like Riddy and the actions that he takes. But in the end, I guess, you know, he's on the good guy's side. You know, that's what's so great about Universal Century. You get that wonderful like story arc and it's, it's why it's one of my uh, favorite Gundam series of all time, Universal Century uh, until I die, I guess. But enough of that, so let's talk more about the kit. So the kit is great. It's wonderfully constructed. It's very solid kit. Nothing 
falls apart. Every once in a while, the wing binders tend to like pop off their little pegs. But other than that, the kit is very solidly designed and there aren't any like small, like fiddly little tricky bits. I do really dislike the sticker on the shield. It's not great. You have to fold it over too many surfaces. It's two different colors. I think they probably could have put a white piece in there and maybe just had the sticker be the gray part, but whatever, it's not a huge complaint. The articulation isn't amazing, especially by today's standards. There is that. I, I really don't understand the lack of articulation in parts like the hips and the torso as they're not even included in the transformation. You just toss them aside and then parts form the rest. So I don't understand that. But all in all, the articulation is fine. You can get all the, the poses that you really want to get out of it. And as far as the whole like transformation parts forming thing, I think this is a great way to do things. You know, a lot of like fully transformable kits at this size become kind of floppy or loose or they don't do things that you really want them to do and or the mobile suit mode doesn't look perfect or the wave rider mode doesn't look perfect and i think that that's one of the great things about a parts forming kit like this both modes look great yes it's annoying to have a little baggie of parts to carry around whenever you want to switch it back and forth but both modes look great they're very solid and they're very well built so i think it's probably the best of both worlds for all the complaining about parts forming i can't really take umbrage with it in this particular kit so that's been the review. Please make sure you click subscribe down below for the latest reviews, uh, news, commentary, everything like that. And check out gunplanetwork.com for all kinds of cool stories. And as always, keep building, everyone. <laughs>